Uh, this is EF class, and we are on page 177, but we're going over some answers here. Um, I think that's about as far as we can go. It is. So we are in, what are we on? 177. All right, so we're seeing four. No, that's not it. Same six. Same six. Uh, we got a Henry, um, Exeter, doesn't have a lot to say, but yes. Uh, oh, yeah, he does. On page 179, he has a lot to say. Well, who's, who's Exeter? Wait a minute, who's Exeter? Are you Exeter? Who's she? I can have the Exeter? Well, you, you can't be both. Then I'll just be Exeter. All right. Awesome. You'll be Exeter, but we need... Um, a Flewellen. Yeah. Uh, we got Flewellen here. You need a Gower. You need a Gower. Um, nope. Uh, I'll be Gloucester. Montjoy. Who's been reading Montjoy? All right. Montjoy. Uh, Henry. Flewellen. All right. That'll get us. Who's Barbara? Um, I don't think we need him right now, do we? There's a Williams. There's a Williams? Yes. Williams, Bates, and Cord. Would, would, you want to do Williams? Yeah. <laughs> who's, who's talking to me? Who wants to do Williams? All right, so let's begin with, uh, I guess it's with Henry, right? Well, that we done. Rice, Valley, and Country. But all's not done. You got to keep the French to be. Did you put your commission to your majesty? Lives he, good uncle. Rice went in this hour, I saw him done. Rice up again and fight. Okay, let's just remember that the battle has started. We already know who's winning. Who's winning? English. Okay, we know that from the French, who were talking about the disorder of their troops. Um, that was, we know, historically that was due to the archers killing so many of the, uh, the knights. And um, so let's go back to, um, are they talking about York? York is his cousin. Um, let's go back to Exeter. Circle both those names. They're they're two of the very few Englishmen who died, in, according to Shakespeare. And 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 relatively speaking, the, the English did lose very few men in comparison. So the first time who died, Suffolk and and York are um, among the few men who died. They're really the two nobles. The only two nobles died, um, and th that that was those two. Okay, Taylor. So notice what he tells them to do because the French are, um, are, are coming back, they're being reinforced. Um, 
he says we've got to kill our prisoners. Uh, if you keep prisoners, you got to guard them. And so it's sometimes you don't want to do that. Killing prisoners though is a is not a good thing. That's usually more than frowned on by kind of international consent. Um, if you if you say no quarter, the term no quarter, if you announce that to your men and you raise a black flag literally or just you say the word, that means you are not going to take prisoners, which means you're going to kill the prisoners. You're not going to take them, you're going to kill them. And that's not, you know, these are unarmed people. Prisoners are always unarmed. Um, all right, so that's where we are. We'll go to scene seven where the, the English, um, these are the English guys, Sue Ellen. Kill the boys and the luggage. Tis expressly against the law of arms. Tis and aren't a piece of knavery. Mark you now, as can be offered in your conscience now, is it not? Tis certain there's not a boy left alive, and the cowardly rascals that ran from the battle have done the slaughter. Besides, they have burned and carried away all that was in the king's tent. Wherefore, the king, most worthily, hath caused every soldier to cut his prisoner's throat, both Tis and Gallant. I, he was a porn at Monmouth, Captain Gower. What call you the town's name where Alexander the Pig was born? Now, why he calls him that, I have no idea. Alexander the Great is who he's talking about, but he calls him Alexander the Pig. Alexander the Great. Why, I pray you, is not Pig great? The Pig, or the Great, or the Mighty, or the Huge, or the Magnanimous, or all the reckonings, save the phrase, is a little var variation. Alexander the Great was born in mid Macedon. His father was Philip of Macedon and Arcadia. I think it is in Macedon where Alexander is born. I tell you, Captain, if you look in the maps of the of the world, I warrant you shall find in the comparisons between Macedon and Monmouth that the situations look you is both alike. There is a river in Macedon, and there is also moreover a river at Monmouth. It is called Y at Monmouth, but it is out of my crank my brains what is the name of the other river but tis all one tis alike as my fingers is to my fingers and there is salmons in both salmons in both if you mark alexander's life well harry on, on of monmouth's life is come after it indifferent well for there's figures in all things alexander god knows and you know in his ranges and in his furies in his wraths and his colors and his moods and his displeasures and his indignations and also being a little intoxicates in his brains did it in his ales and his anger look you kill his best friend cletus our king does not like him in that he never killed any of his friends it is not well done mark you now to take the tails out of my mouth ere it is made and finished I speak but in the figures and comparisons of it. As Alexander killed his friend Cletus, being in his ales and his cups, so also Harry Monmouth, being in his right wits and his good judgments, turned away the fat knight with the great belly doublet. He was full of jests and gipes and knaveries and mock mocks. I have forgotten his name. Sir John Falstaff. That is he. I'll tell you. There is good men born at Monmouth. Here comes his majesty. All right, Henry. I was not angry since I came to Paris. Oops. I saw this incident. Take a trumpet, go. Ride down into the horsemen on your hill, on yon hill. If they will fight us, with us, bid them come down or void the field. They do offend our sight. If they'll do neither, they will come to them. We will come to them and make their stir away as swift as stones course from an old Vassarian slaves. Besides, we'll cut the throats of those we have, and not a man of them we, that we shall take shall taste our mercy. Go and tell them so. Okay, pause. Uh, so the last thing we, we talked about was the fact that Henry ordered his prisoners to be killed. Um, we get a little more information about that. Flewellyn and Gower are comparing, well at least Flewellyn is comparing Henry to whom? Alexander the Great. Right. And he's got a lot mixed up there, but and he says poor not born. Right. And I don't know why he talks like that, but he does. Um, and one interesting little thing did you pick up, uh, Fluella did, that uh, they both were born near rivers and so forth. But he says that Alexander killed his best friend Cletus. 
And um, Gower says, our king is not like that in him. He never killed any of his friends. Mm -hmm. And then it says here, uh, as Alexander killed Cletus, being in his ales and his cup, so also Harry Monmouth, being in his right wits and good judgment, turned away the fat knight with great belly doublet. He was full of jesting, jipes, and knaveries and mocks. I have forgot his name, Sir John Falstaff. What did we say about John Falstaff? Why did he die? Mm, that wasn't the traitor. Yeah, Henry kind of left him when he became king. Yes, he deserted him. And so um, Falstaff died of a broken heart. So in that respect, he's also like, strangely enough, ironically, like Alexander, who apparently killed his best friend. Henry sort of killed his best friend. Um, I don't know. He loved his friend. What? I mean, he loved his friend when he became Yeah, we talked about that. You, know, you have to make difficult... Well, not only that, but what did he do with um, Nim and Bardo? But they were also, they did something they bad. They, they did. did. They did. So, they deserved it. And so he said that it's only just that he killed the people who committed the murder. Right. Like, if he didn't kill somebody who was his friend who committed murder, wouldn't it be the same then? That's right. So, as a, you know, we, I think one of the major things, and we heard it today, I thought from almost every candidate said, what makes a good leader? And it's what we've been talking about here. Henry is a good leader. That doesn't mean he uh, does always good things, but he's able to rally and lead people to the ends that, that he, he's going after. And so he's made some tough decisions. Ignoring Falstaff, ended in his death, killing his friends. Those are tough decisions. Um, what we don't like, we've said this before, happens with a lot of powerful men. They take care of their own. You know, in other words, they, they make exceptions for family members, and some of them are criminals, and they'll, they'll cover for them. And that's, that's, we don't like that. We understand the sentiment, but you're not, you have to be more than just a brother now, or a son, or even a husband. You are a leader of an entire country, yeah. Um, so anyway, why did, we know now a little more about why he killed his, his um, prisoner. Here comes the hero. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Why did he kill his prisoner? Oh, so that, um, yeah, because they were coming back. Like, that, that, that was part of it, but there's another reason we find out here. Um, oh, um, where it says, enforced from the old Assyrian slings. Well, besides, we'll, we'll, cut we'll go back to the beginning of the scene. Uh, Fluel says, kill the boys. And the luggage, the this expressly against the law of arms. Uh, who's that? And what what else did they destroy? A little boy. To not just boy, but all the boys. Now there are a lot of boys in in combat. You know they could be what do you call them? Um, not not uh, squires, but pages. You know they're they're young children sometimes in combat. Um, they're not fighting, but they're in. In, in and around, but um, our boy, the guy that was friends with him, Bardolf and Pistol, was among them, and all the boys were killed. They were all slaughtered. They were unarmed children that the, the, the French who were running from battle killed and took the stuff from Henry. So, again, that, one of the questions I want to ask you next week, and I'll even put it on the exam, what are the costs of war? Like, what does war cost people? And clearly, it costs money because the church was giving money, but far more valuable than money are lives. lives. And look at some of the lives. This would be an example of the terrible cost of war that boys are killed. Uh, innocent boys are killed. Um, maybe unarmed, probably are. They have no match for a, a, a grown-up man. And so Henry is angry. Okay, Exeter, Montjoy enters, and Exeter. Where are you? Here comes the herald of the French knight. His eyes are humbler than they used to be. Now, now, what means what means this, herald? No, thou not. What that I have find these bones of mine for ransom. Comes thou again for ransom. No, great king. I come to thee for charitable. Thank you. 
What's, what's my door asking for? To be able to look over the field and find their men and to like separate the nobles from the peasants or from the commoners and to be able to like mark who is dead and who's alive. I think, have you ever thought of that? In battle, you've got this field of dead and dying people. You want yours back. They want theirs back, at least the ones that are still alive. And you want to bring back the bodies. So there's got to be an element in a battle of, of retrieving your people. What we say, no man left behind, that includes the body of soldiers. That's part so of the code. So like after the war is won, you can go back and pick them up? Say that again. So like after the war is won, like you guys agree, like how do people have them? You guys go at, like the huge size and go at different times to collect them in? Well, they just mentioned this right here that Manjo is saying we want, us, we want to have a truce, uh, a truce so we can pick, get our dead and dying. So there's sometimes an agreement. Um, I never saw the whole movie, but the movie, what was the name of that movie? Um, it was about the Battle of Okinawa in World War II, and the guy oh, was a... Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge, he was a, a conscious objector, and so he was a medic, he didn't fight. He would go back up the mountain, the cliff, and all he did was go get the wounded and bring them back and lower them down and go get some more wounded and bring them back. Um, that's a major part of any battle is what do you do with your wounded. Um, all right, so um, King, Henry. Oh, I tell you truly, I know not if today if the owners are known. For yet, how many of your horsemen fear and gallop over the hill? Joy. Today is yours. Praise be to God, and not our strength for it. What is it? What is this castle called that stands hard by? They call it Agincourt. Then call we this the field of Agincourt, fall on the day of Crispin Crispianus. Your grandfather of famous memory, and pleased your majesty, and your great uncle Edward, the Black Prince of Wales, as I have read in the chronicles, fought a most brave battle here in France. They did, Blue Ellen. Your Majesty says very true. If Your Majesty is remembered of it, the Welshmen did good service in a garden where leeks did grow, wearing leeks in their mouth caps, which Your Majesty knows this hour is an honorable badge of the service, and I do believe Your Majesty takes no scorn to wear the leek upon St. Tavy's Day. I wear it for a memorable honor, for I am Welsh, you know, good countrymen. All the water and whey cannot wash your majesty's Welsh blood out of your body. I can tell you that. God bless it and preserve it as long as it pleases the, his grace and his majesty too. Thanks, uh, thanks good, my countrymen. My Jeshu, I am your majesty's countryman. I care not who you who know it. I will confess it to all the world. I know it need not to be shamed of your majesty. Praise be God. So long as your majesty is an honest man. God keep me so. Our heralds go with him. Bring me just notice of the, num of the numbers, numbers dead on both our parts. Okay, we'll pause. Um, you know, what's going to happen here is that scene between Williams and Henry. Remember the cap with the glove in it? That's going to take place. So it also provides uh, a little bit of comic relief. All right, so... I think we're good till 2.30, then we'll have the last but um, A question, he asked, I'm looking yeah, right at yeah, it, it says 2.30. Um, to answer me this question, it says, is the day, the day is, it says, I do not know if the day be ours or no. Who won the battle of Agincourt? English. English did. He, how do we know who wins the battle? Right, he does. But how do we know who wins a battle? Uh, We've talked about this before. You get control of the land? 
Yeah. Did he get like maimed? What? Maimed? Well, he, he did, but um, you you the, usually the the winner of a battle is one who occupies the field of battle when it's over. Like sometimes you capture a town, you know, it's uh, whatever, but. Um, you don't have to kill every one of your enemy. A good army is not going to let, him, let himself be killed, every single person killed. So the battle is over. Whoever occupies the ground where the battle was fought is considered the winner. And I've asked you this before. Who won the battle of Guilford Courthouse? Uh, the, the, or the British. The British won. And why by that? Why did they? How, why did we say they won? They took over the battle. What? They took over the battle. Right. The, uh, uh, General Green retreated from the field of battle. Yet it was a Pyrrhic victory. Because it, they lost more men than it was worth. That's right. They lost, uh, I think, 500 men out of their 2,000 men that day. And so they had to retreat the next day. So even though it was technically a defeat for Green, he's considered a, a hero of the, of the um, revolution because, um, because they inflicted so much uh, loss. All right. Well, we don't have a lot of time. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, Williams enters and... Um, Henry speaks to him. Oh, actually, Henry speaks to Exeter. Soldier. Uh, right before that, Henry. Is Henry over there? He says that. Okay, well, just say it again so I can hear. Call yonder. Call yonder. Call yonder. Oh, call yonder. Williams is looking for. King. King. And he's standing right there, but apparently he doesn't have that the glove on his hat, so he knows this is the king. He doesn't guess at all that this is the same God, so um, he says, keep your oath, whatever you promise to this guy, keep it. And then William says, So I will, my liege, as I live. Who serves thou under? Under Captain Gower, my liege. Gower is a good captain, and he has good knowledge and literature in the war wars. Call him hither to me. Now you gotta see, you can't see this. I mean, if you're watching it, it would make sense. Williams exits the stage and Hen Henry gives his glove to Fluell. Mm -hmm. So you can see already in advance that it can be a it's going to be a comic scene because Fluellen's gonna have the glove of Henry. But he has no clue what's going on here. So uh, Henry. Here, Fluellen, wear thou this paper for me and stick it in my cap. When Alcon and myself were down together, I plucked this glove from his helmet. If any man challenges the challenge this, he is a friend to Al, Al, Alcon and an enemy to our person. If thou Alcon encounter any such apprehension, and thou dost me love. Your grace does me as great honors as can be desired in the hearts of his subjects. I would fain see the man that was but two legs that shall find himself agreed at his, this glove. That is all. But I would fain see it once, and please God of his grace that I might see. Notice thou Gower? He is my dear friend, and please you. Pray thee, go see him, and bring him to my tent. I will fetch him. My lord of Warwick, and my brother of Gloucestershire. Wait a minute. Gloucestershire, my lord. Two syllables. Follow the Llewellyn closely at thy heels. The glove which I have given him for a favor may happily purchase him a box of thy youth. It is the soldiers. I bargain 
I buy bargains, should wear it myself. Followed because of war wear. If not, if not, the soldiers strike him as I judge by his blunt bearing, then I will keep his word. Some sudden mischief may arise in it. For I do know Flewellyn Flewellyn Violet, now is, and, tu and touched with color, hot as gunpowder, and quickly will return to injury. Follow, to see there be no harm between you. Go ye with me. So tomorrow we'll pick up at scene eight. But you notice what he told Fluel. He said, this is actually a Frenchman's glove I found in the battle. And if anybody challenged you, um, he's a friend of the Frenchman. So he makes up this story. So Fluellen will be angry at the glove, and Williams will be angry at the glove because he thinks this is the guy. So this is so typical of Shakespeare in so many of his plays. A, a mistaken identity are really fun. All right, well done. We have one more scene, basically, uh, which we will get to tomorrow. And we will do, we're not quite ready, guys. We're not quite ready. Uh, we will get to the review. I may give it to you tomorrow. Since y'all are ahead, you deserve to get started sooner. Um, but I may give you a little information about Act 5 without having to read. We might even read a little bit, you know. Like the yeah, we'll do the vocab first before that. So we, we have just one more scene to read. Who reminded her we had vocab? Oh, she was. She's reminding you, not me. I wasn't planning to forget it. I was hoping you would. Good morning, Catherine.